Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here with a quick Illustrator tutorial about this technique I've come up with to make a 3D logo in Illustrator with real extrusions and real perspective and snap everything down into just two solid colors when we're done. So if we wanted to change this whole logo to two different colors, say this blue and you know maybe a green that looks you know really great together, we could do that really easily with just a couple clicks. So we're going to go over this technique. We're going to cover some of my favorite other Illustrator shortcuts, um, some old ones and some new stuff that just came out in the newest release of Illustrator CC, which just came out um, a week ago here in January 2014. So if you're watching this in the future, um, it might be old and you might already know that, but you're also in the future, so everything else is different and more awesome anyway. So let's just get started. I'm going to make a new file in Illustrator and I'm just going to leave it at letter because it won't really matter right now. Um, and I'll save this later. I'm not even going to worry about that. So right away, I'm just going to type all caps, big logo um, and center my paragraph and scale this up. So this would be say, you know, you have an assignment to make a big logo for companies that specializes in making big logos and you could be like, Got it. Perfect idea. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to use a line and just snap vertical and horizontal to my artboard, drag out some guides that I'm going to end up using later. And then I'm going to use the font Coverse All Stars. Uh, it's been a font I've been really into lately. It's really good for you know big titles and motion graphics and has nothing to do with footwear. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description. It's free online, so be sure to check that out if you want to follow along exactly. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some quick kerning because it would drive me crazy later and get to that point and then just make sure this is vertically and horizontally centered um, again for later. So the first thing I'm going to do is outline this type so we have the paths. I'm going to go object or type create outlines or shift uh, command O and get that. And then I'm going to zoom in and drag guides on the left and the right side of this so I can use those as a reference point. And the next thing I'm going to do is get my rectangle tool or M to grab that and draw that top bar. And if we want to round those corners, check this out. This just came out last week. I can get the direct arrow and press A and go into these little circles and just pull those corners in. How awesome is that? Never gonna have to use this one again. Um, and then I'm just gonna duplicate that on the bottom here real quick. And I'll do this a bunch of times. I'm gonna grab the Pathfinder, select all of this stuff, and use this Unite to combine all of these. So when we start doing stuff later, it applies to all of it. Um, so the Pathfinder over here, or Window Pathfinder, if you don't have it, it's a really important and awesome tool for doing this sort of stuff. Then I'm going to create those circles that we saw here. I'm using one of my favorite Illustrator tricks, which I'll show you right now after I center this. I'm going to make a circle up here at the top. And then because I centered all of this stuff to the center lines here, I'm going to grab this, press R for Rotate. And before I rotate it, because it's just a circle and wouldn't rotate anything, I'm going to click here in the center and then hold Shift while I'm moving it and then press Option to make a copy. Bam! Second circle. And now, since that was my last, op last action, if I press Command D a bunch of times, it's going to wrap those circles exactly at that angle around. So now I have actually eight circles and I'll delete these two and look at that. We have circles that exactly line up how we want them to. How cool is that? Um, and I actually wanted these two to be slightly bigger, but I want to do it exactly um, a number bigger. So I'm going to grab this one and go to Object Transform Scale and just type it in Uniform 150. Same thing over here. Transform Scale 150. And then again, I'm going to grab all of this and Pathfinder, Unite, now it's all one object. If I change the color or grab any of it, it will all contain the same path, even though they're not touching, which again is great. 
And the first thing I'm going to do to get this kind of warping is, well, I'm going to warp it uh, with arcs. If you go to Effect, Warp, and what I'm going to do is Arc Lower and Arc Upper. I'll start with Upper. And this looks kind of silly just for the default effect, but if I do negative 15 or a negative value, it's actually going to invert that arc and bend it down. So I'm going to go to OK. And then I'm going to affect warp arc lower, but guess what? Same thing, negative 15, and then it's going to bend that up, which looks pretty cool already. Um, and how this is happening, if we ha look in appearance up here, it's actually not burning these in yet. So if we did some stuff later, um, it's not outlined. You can see that I can actually disable the effect still, and the original artwork is still right here, and it's just displaying that warping. And what we want to do is outline that. So again, we're going to go to Object, Expand Appearance, and that's going to make that final. So you can see I can't access that in the appearance anymore. All right, so those were a couple little cool tips, but let's get to the 3D right away. Because, you know, this is Illustrator, and typically you think flat 2D artwork, but I love everything being in 3D, so let's make some 3D. So I'm going to grab all of this, and it's actually one object again, so I can just grab any of it. Go to Effect, 3D, Extrude, and Bevel. And what this is going to do if we preview, and I'm going to go back and give this a color because I'm going to need it later, and it's going to be easier to see. Um, doesn't matter what color right now, but I'll just use this blue for now. Um, again, Effect, 3D, Extrude, and Bevel. If I preview, you can see it's actually giving some depth to this, which is pretty cool. Um, so to get that look that I wanted, that it's, you know, this big um, fisheye distortion logo perspective, I'm going to type this in manually and go 25, 0, 0. And what it looks like now is basically that this is just kind of sitting on a table. But if I grab this perspective over here, this is going to give us that distortion. And how cool is that? So that's a little extreme. I'm going to type in 125, maybe 135. Let's go a little further. And that gives us this rotation and extrusion plus um, some perspective and shift that you might see if you imagine like a wide angle or a fisheye lens. So I'm going to go to OK. And very similar to that arcing, the appearance over here just shows that. So we could actually go edit that if we didn't like it. If we're like, nah, I want a different number. Um, it's not final yet. So to get that to be final, I'm going to go Object, again, Expand Appearance. And now all these paths are final and outlined. And you can see my um, the little eye dropper there is gone, and all of these paths are now outlined. But it's a bunch of paths, and to get this extrusion, it makes it really complicated, and we got to simplify this a bit. So to grab these front letters, I can actually just grab one with the direct select arrow up here, or press A. And then because we're using a color, and it's making this color shift to look like it has perspective and depth, I'm going to go to Select, Same, Fill, and Stroke. And that's actually going to grab all of just those outlines, which is exactly what I want. So I'm going to copy that, make a new layer, Command L. I'll call this front, and I'll call this one back. And then I'm going to hide the back one, and on the front, paste that band. So we just got that. It looks like we actually got a little bit extra. So let's do this the other way. Um, usually that's going to grab me what I want, but don't know what happened there. We're not going to worry about it. Um, if you use a different color and it came out, great. If you're mad at me for taking too many steps, you know, don't worry. We'll be back on track in a second. So I'm just going to delete all that. Um, and this is good. We'll go through if it didn't work out how you wanted and you're like, what the hell? I, that's not what I wanted. Why are you telling me the wrong things? I can grab the direct select arrow and just manually grab all of those shapes. So now I have all the lines, the letters, the shapes. If I do copy paste just to check, all right, it's copying everything. Good. And again, I'll just grab all of those, make sure I don't move them because uh, we don't want that copy. And then I'm going to go back to the front and look at that. We only lost a couple seconds. 
So still a fast one. And I forgot my circle again. So grab that circle and finally maybe we'll get it. All right, there we go. Got all of them this time. So now what I have is one layer that's just the fill letters and one that's all of this other stuff and the fill. So what I'm going to do is, again, use my Pathfinder on this front layer, grab everything, Pathfinder Unite. So now it's all one united path. And then on this back, I'm going to grab all this stuff, including the front, and I'm going to, again, unite. And that's going to make what looks kind of like a weird, awkward shape. Um, but if we show the front layer, and maybe change this to a white so we can see what we're doing. Show that front layer and grab all of this back. If we start to add a stroke of that same color, so let's just make these both blue and round our caps and corners. Now look at that. That's giving us our perspective and outlining it um, and leaving that whole front as just one color. So that, that's awesome. That's what we wanted. And we're almost there already. Look at that. It's, you know, we're only at a little over 10 minutes and we're almost done. So this is good. Look how quickly you could do this. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is um, if I look at this, some of those holes are kind of creating some awkward shapes. And I would, you know, this is accurate, but I actually wouldn't want those really just because it, it looks distracting and it looks like big dash logo. And this is the big logo company, not the big dash logo company. I can't. You know, I don't want to put extra characters in their name. Um, they're not going to like that. So I'm going to, on this background layer, do two things. I'm going to, again, because we want to be able to scale this evenly. So if I were to scale it all now, you can see it looks like it's getting bulkier because it's still at a stroke of five. So I want to object path outline stroke. And that's going to outline the stroke and drop everything down to the same color over here. And then we could just use our Pathfinder to make that one object. And what I'm going to do for those holes is just make this easy on myself. Um, I'm going to just draw a square over where those are, or I guess this is a rectangle in this case, as it would be. Um, grab both of those. Again, Pathfinder, Unite. And now I have one layer that's my back color and one layer that's the front. So if I show both of them, I have this final logo. It has all of that real extrusions, and I can just easily change the colors to something else. And this is great if you're doing a client project and they want to show a couple colors. Say that that's my first one. Um, I can just duplicate this one and change the color. So let's get that orange that I liked. And that's a red, so I'm going to grab orange and make it a little darker. And if I was doing a real client project and I want this to be actual um, printable Pantone numbers that they could use and have a corporate color, um, to get out of right now we're just in RGB and everything is just adding up. If we want this to be, get this actual chip, check out this little trick. If I, in the color guide, grab this little icon, go to one color job, library pantone solid coded click ok ok now if i press this it's going to down here show us that actual actual pantone number so 7579 and down here in these swatches i could actually get rid of all this other stuff and then that's going to clear that up a little so i'll grab this again just make it that color and if i am in the color guide and grab a different color press it, it's going to do the same thing because now it's in Pantone chip mode in this color guide and that's going to save that same one. So maybe I want to present them with a blue, maybe this orange, and then I want just my one color black and white to show them, you know, I've thought of everything. How is it going to show when it's black and white really little? So we have that and what we could do with this one is maybe this is our two color option. This other cool little part of the color guide I like a lot is, you know, maybe you want this blue, but a fill that goes with that. You want to play with some colors. And what this color guide is great for doing is if you didn't pay attention in color theory class or you know you don't want to think about it, you can just use this to cheat basically and just get some ideas of color combinations. So I can grab this blue and based on that blue it's going to suggest things from the color wheel. So I could get this tan, grab the front color, 
make that tan oh that looks way too ridiculous um so maybe a lighter tan and maybe i don't even want this to be blue maybe i want it to be you know a, a purple so i could over here grab a purple get my pantone chip grab the front color make this based on this purple and you know look through all these color options that it's going to give me that all you know, kind of play well together. So maybe I'll just get, you know, a lighter purple. Sure, why not? Um, and what's great about this technique is, as I said, we snap this down to just two objects, and they're scalable. So now if I bring this into other programs or, you know, I'm moving these around, I basically can't mess it up. And if you've passed this file off to, you know, an art department or to the client, if you just group these layers or you know just leave it at two if you want to have it it's fully scalable and it's not going to get that shift with the stroke um, and this is great because now say we're bringing this into other programs we could copy and maybe in Photoshop we're doing a print document so we could just do you know new say this is print and I can paste this in here as a smart object and then bam it's scalable in Photoshop and not going to lose that resolution and because you know I love my After Effects we'll get into even a second of After Effects here um, over here you know if I had this and I'll just delete these ones real quick and save this file in my folder just call this big logo final 01 because you know it's never going to be final um, I'll leave it at CC. That's fine for now. I just know I'm working on my own stuff, so I don't need to save it down. If you're dropping it to a client, you might want to save it down to a different version. And then in After Effects, as an example, if I'm using this for motion graphics, um, I could bring that in really quick as a composition, retain layer sizes, and just double click these, copy these layers into my new comp. And if I have two layers, I could parent this white to the back one and then scale it up. And, oh, we got a problem there because it still looks like it's losing resolution. But if I turn on this continuously rasterized switch, now we're getting our scalability. It's working in motion graphics. So now, you know, we could quickly do all of our typical compositing stuff, add vignettes, add backgrounds, add a little, little mask, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, but this is great because this is, you know, a scalable vector object that we made pretty quickly. And you can see how this is really useful for, you know, all sorts of uses and to come up with, you know, a quick logo in, you know, really a couple minutes. So after you get this down, you know, you could knock this out in a minute or two, you know, maybe even less without, you know, my jokes if you cut those out. Um, so it's a really cool technique. It's something that, you know, I really like doing and some little techniques along the way that I really use all the time, like a rotation, duplication, and even, you know, this new little one that I really like with the rectangle and snapping the corners down. Um, some new stuff that just came out in Illustrator, so you can check that out um, on their new features on Adobe's website. There's some other cool ones, but this is that little, that little new trick is by far the one I'm the most excited about. So yeah, that was a quick little technique. I hope you learned a lot um, and check out the next video next time then and we'll keep talking about Illustrator and motion graphics and Cinema 4D and do all sorts of stuff. So I will see you next time.